Hi everybody, welcome back to Audrey Approved. Today I wanted to go over some anticipated releases for the back end of 2022 and the front end the first few months of 2023. It's a little bit of a mix of sci-fi, non-fiction, I think a little bit of contemporary fiction, maybe a little bit of fantasy as well. Um, and yeah, I don't know, I just like following new releases, I find it really fun, and I like watching these videos, and hopefully you do too. First off, I wanted to quickly mention a few books that have already come out this month in September, um, but I'm just really excited about it, so I, I want to make sure that I, that I talk about them. The first one is Step by Bloody Step, which is by Mateus Bergara and Simon Spurrier. I've talked about that duo quite a bit on this channel, well, in the like four videos that I have, but um, they wrote Coda, which is a, a fantasy graphic novel series. It's a, a three-part a three part series that I personally just really love for like the storytelling and the art especially and so they've teamed up again for this new uh, this new series which is about I think a girl and like a, a monster or something that that follows her around but the catch is that this graphic novel has no English like the the characters are quote unquote talking but they uh, are talking in like a different language, like a made up language. And so I'm very curious how they tell a story this way. Um, the art looks very, very similar to Coda. So I'm, I'm really excited to pick this up. I have a copy, I just haven't gotten to it yet. Another one that releases soon is, um, or may have already been released, is Bliss Montage by Ling Ma. This is the same author that wrote Severance, which I think is like a mixture of plague fiction and like millennial fiction, but I actually haven't read it myself, so don't quote me on that. Um, and this is a short story collection that thematically focuses a lot on um, women and, and their daughters and specifically like Asian women and Asian immigrants. Um, but there's this fun like speculative twist within a lot of the stories. And when I think back a lot about a lot of the, the short story collections that I personally just really love, um, many of them have like a speculative element. I'm thinking in particular of like Friday Back, Friday Black or um, what is it called? When, when a man falls from the sky. I think that's what it's called. Um, and I really like these types of stories because they, you know, the, the speculative elements put our characters into situations they wouldn't normally be in, right? Because they're, they're fantastical in some element. Um, but the characters then have to respond to this like new setting and new environment and new situation. And I think it, it yields itself to some really interesting commentary and interesting dynamics. So. One of the stories that I really like from Bliss Montage is um, about a toxic friendship and, and a drug that can make um, the person who, who takes that drug invisible. I thought that story was really, really good. Um, but yeah, I think this is a great story, short story collection. I gave it around four stars because I think a few of the stories kind of faded away into nothing, which is not my favorite kind of ending for a short story. Um, but the cover is great and overall I'd totally recommend reading this. Another book that has come out recently in the last few weeks is The Godmother, Murder, Vengeance, and the Bloody Struggle of Mafia Women by Barbie um, Nadeau. And this follows the rise of a few different women that have risen within the Italian mob and their backstories and how they got involved. But I think it also talks a lot about, you know, mob families and mob dynamics um, and how these women, you know, kind of provide an anchor within, um, within those social structures. I don't love true crime is like a subgenre, but um, this seems a little bit, maybe a little bit more removed from that because it's following almost like a biography of these women. So uh, I have this on audiobook from the library right now and yeah, I really like the cover on this one as well. And rounding out the September releases is uh, The Golden Enclaves by Naomi Novik. I, um, I really loved the first book in this series, which is called, um, the School of Mance, or, and it's called the School of Mance Trilogy. I'm gonna have to put it up on, on the side right here. I thought it was a really fresh, um, you know, magic school kind of book, but with a really kind of dark and humorous undertone. I did not love uh, the second book in the series, but I will, I will continue um, for this third one. So I'm excited to, to wrap up um, the School of Mance as a series. In October, we have three books that I'm eyeing. The first one is Illumination Stories by Alan Moore. Alan Moore is the um, graphic artist that uh, wrote, I think, The Watchmen and V for Vendetta. I actually didn't really like V for Vendetta, but I did like The Watchmen, um, especially the, the HBO adaptation of it. But, um, you know, obviously Alan Moore must have a, a very uh, creative mind, and so I'm, 
I'm eagerly anticipating this one. It's a, it's a chonky one. I think it's like 500 pages for this one. Um, I have it out from NetGalley right now. Haven't gotten to it as well, but um, I think that this one is likely going to be pretty popular and I'm, I'm pretty eager to get to it. Singer Distance by Ethan um, Ch Chetagnier. I, I know I butchered that one. Um, is, a, is a forthcoming release um, that is, I think, I'm anticipating it being a little bit of like literary fic meets sci-fi. It's about uh, a group of friends, including um, uh, a girl and her boyfriend, who are MIT grad students, and they are trying to solve, I think, some some mathematical proofs that aliens have left for us. So it's a extraterrestrial math discussion. It sounds very nerdy, um, but I'm anticipating it to focus not only on the experience with um, these other this other species, but also um, the relationship between um, the the grad school friend group and how that evolves as the plot progresses. That's all I really know about this. I do also really like the cover on this. I guess this video could have been like covers that I really like that are upcoming, um, but I think it should be good and it comes out um, mid-October. The White Mosque by Sophia Simitar is um, a travelogue where the author is uh, traveling through Uzbekistan and talking about you know the identity of Uzbek Uzbekistani people, um, a lot of the history of the area. And I'm actually interested in this book because it reminds me a lot of a different book that I've read this year um, as part of an around the world book club that I'm doing. I read a book from Bulgaria called um, Borders, A Journey to the Edge of Europe by um, Casa um, Kevona, I think. I'll, I'll put the, the title there, um, which is also a travelogue, and I think it's maybe my, my first travelogue as she, she moves through Bulgaria and talks about the different regions and the different identities within the region and um, the history of, of the people that have settled there. And so, yeah, this is kind of like a, a new subgenre that I'm, I'm really interested in. So if you have travelogue-esque kind of books, um, Please let me know. In November, we have four books that I'm interested in. The first one is uh, Aesthetica by Ali Rowbottom. Um, I have this book, I'm like 40% through the book right now. And this is, you know, there's this, there's been this kind of upsurge, I think, in, I guess you would call it like millennial fiction or um, kind of, uh, I guess people call it sad girl fiction or something like that. And I kind of think that this might fall into almost like a, a, sub, a subcategory of that. This is the story of a former Instagram influencer and she is reflecting on her past, you know, in the days upcoming to uh, a surgery that she's about to undertake, which is called Aesthetica, where basically she gets all of her past, like, you know, physical, um, physical enhancements, um, they bring it back to what her, her face would naturally look like from the beginning. So they're basically removing like Botox or lip filler or a nose job or all of that and bringing you back to what you would have looked like if you hadn't have done any of that surgery. Um, but it's really kind of a, a commentary on expectations and beauty and um, feeling young and all of the, the external pressures that a lot of um, young women feel now and especially with the use of social media in, in presenting themselves that way. So I like this so far. Um, I think it's pretty good. And um, uh, again, <laughs> I'm gonna repeat again, great cover. Two nonfiction picks that are upcoming for November. The first one is Con Artist, The Life and Crimes of the World's Greatest Art Forger, which is by Tony Tetro and Giampiero Ambrosi, which, um, you know, I do really like art history. And within art history, of course, there's, there's this interest in art forgeries and the value of art. But I've never read uh, I've never read a book by someone who actually forged art. And so this is written in collaboration, I think, with the investigative journalist that outed him. Um, so Tony Tetro was like a really talented, um, or is a really talented art forger that can imitate a lot of really famous pieces of art. Um, and so I'm really curious to hear his story, not only how he got into it, but also how he got caught, and what are the nuances of forging art from somebody who actually did it. With a really self-explanatory title, we also have Butts, a Backstory by Heather Radke, which is about the behind, and in particular, I think the female behind, 
Um, I'm expecting this to be a little bit of a cultural commentary on how on how we as a society view and value butts and what they say or what we think they say about the people that um, I guess own them. Um, I also think there's a little bit of um, biology in this, you know, what is the purpose of a butt historically, how has that changed in modern society. I think this should be fun and interesting. I have the audiobook on hold already um, and I'm eager to get to it. And rounding out November, we have The Sorcerer of Pyongyang by Marcel Thoreau. And this is a piece of historical fiction about a young boy, I think that he lives in North Korea, um, who ends up coming across a Dungeon and Dragon um, game set. And um, I think it's a bit of a, of a coming of age centered around the story of, of his obsession with this, this game. Um, I'm interested in this because uh, I, I like reading things about North Korea, especially having read Nothing to Envy by um, Barbara Dewick or Lewick, I'll put it up here, which is a fantastic piece of narrative nonfiction about North Korea. And the author of The Sorcerer of Pyongyang actually spent some time in North Korea, so I think some of the some of the stories that he talks about or some of the, the settings are based on his own experiences. Hopefully this, this will be good as well. And then in February, three pieces of, uh, of fiction that I'm looking forward to. The first is The Sham, the Sham Shine Blind, with a little bit of a tongue twister, by Paz Pardo, which is set in San Francisco, which is um, the area in which uh, I'm in. So I always love uh, reading stories about local places. It's set, it's set in some sort of future where um, people can control emotions, so there's like, there's like these these chemical substances that when released and breathed in will make you feel sad or happy or unsettled or scared and so um, these uh, pharmaceuticals have been turned into weapons into recreational drugs and i'm unsure what the actual plot premise is but the, the concept of being able to control emotions with um, chemical enhancement seems really intriguing to me, so I think this one should hopefully be interesting. One of my more anticipated releases out of even of this list is On the Savage Side by Tiffany McDaniel. Now I read The Summer That Melted Everything by Tiffany McDaniel, I think this year, it might have been last year, and I loved that book. I still haven't read her second book, which is called Betty, but this upcoming release is her third, and it is a piece of fiction, I believe, but it's, it's focused on the murders of six women um, in the Ohio area. I think all of McDaniel's books are set in her hometown area. Um, and while I really don't like the cover, it's the first time you're gonna hear me say that in this video, I will read anything that McDaniel comes out with because I just love her use of language. Um, I, I just think it's so good, so good. Um, so I'm eagerly anticipating this one. This one's a chonker at like, maybe 700 pages. And then lastly, within February, we have, I don't know if you pronounce it Y-N or yes, no, but um, one of those by Esther Yee, which is about uh, a young woman who is obsessed with a K-pop star. Um, and then the K-pop star goes missing. And then she, you know, goes in search for this K-pop star. And while that, you know, synopsis sounds kind of silly, a lot of the comparisons um, to this book are comparing it to like Elf Botman, um, or Otesha Moshveg, so I'm actually anticipating quite a bit of hype around this one. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I have a copy out from NetGalley. Um, I haven't got to it yet, but I do think that the premise sounds really interesting and maybe a lot of commentary about obsession and social media and um, idolizing these, I guess, yeah, idols um, in ways that are unhealthy. And then three more books and then I'm done. Uh, in March, we have just one release. We have a White Cat, Black Dog by Kelly Link. This is a collection of, they call it surreal modern fairy tales. And I love me some speculative fiction, like I said before, when it comes to my short story collections. I don't know anything else about it, but I do think it seems really interesting. And then rounding out the choices is um, two books that are coming out in April. The first one is Untethered Sky by Fonda Lee, who is the same author who wrote it's called the Green Bone Saga or the Jade Bone Saga. I can't remember. I read the first two books of that trilogy, um, and I did find it really immersive and, and really good. And so I think in this forthcoming release, um, Fonda Lee has moved maybe a little bit away from urban fantasy to more traditional kind of fantasy settings. I think this has to do with a young girl trying to get revenge and something to do with giant birds. Um, I wonder where I picked that up. 
that clue up. Um, and then lastly, the total last one is um, Adelaide by Genevieve Wheeler, which comes out the middle of April. And the synopsis of, these, of this book talks about um, a young woman who's obsessed with a man um, who doesn't really love her back. And it gives me a lot of Sally Rooney vibes, um, particularly normal people, um, which isn't a book that I was super obsessed with, but I think that the premise is really interesting. I like books about romantic relationships that don't end up in happily ever afters. And I don't know if this one is, is one of those. I have no idea how it ends. Um, but I am drawn to kind of the, the anti-romantic ending um, storyline, and this one gives me that kind of vibe. And those are my anticipated releases for the next six-ish um, months. I'm sure more will be announced in the next, you know, few weeks, but as of right now, those are what I'm interested in picking up. I have holds on many of them already at the library, and yeah, I'm eager to get to them. Um, if you're interested in, in knowing what I think about them, you can follow me on Goodreads, because. I'm probably more likely to write a review there than I am to make another video uh, anytime soon, but I hope you guys are doing well and I'll see you next time. Bye.